good morning, everyone. Uh, today, I'm going to talk a little bit about food safety for you peak operations. So on top of what you already have to do on your farm in terms of food safety, there's some tweaks that you have to do for you peak operations because you are selling uh, fresh produce to consumers. So there are some 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 characters, some field uh, procedures, process that you have to do to ensure that not only uh, your consumers are, are are getting safe food, but also you're you're having uh, your field safe as well all the time because you're having visitors all the time. So you want to ensure that you have uh, safe crops. Uh, so we all know that you peak farms are agritourists or a great way to engage the public and educate consumers about agriculture in general, uh, especially with the kids. Uh, so it creates business opportunities. Uh, it's a good way to start small and grow with your experience and, and sales. But you have to account for food safety concerns and liability. So you are liable for ensuring that your food is safe for uh, your consumers. Uh, so a few steps that you have to do uh, before your visitors arrive at your facility. Uh, have signage and policies in place. Uh, you might have folks that working with you. So make sure that everybody knows safety policies on your farm. Um, signing directions for, uh, for those ones that are coming to visit your farm. So where they can go, where they cannot go. Um, signage for reminding for animals. Sometimes people think like this is a family uh, event. I'm going to bring everybody, including my pets. So think about it. It's not a place to bring their pets and, and they're not allowed in the field. Uh, make sure that you have a signage for proper hand washing practices, or, you know, or you have someone trained on your facility that can guide them. Uh, you know, if they have, they wash their hands prior to coming or prior to coming in the field and then picking up um, the fruits and, and vegetables. Uh, so regarding the hand washing stations, so you you should have a allocated hand washing station uh, well stocked with liquid soap, potable water, disposable paper towel, a catch and basting, so you don't want that water that it's falling from the people's hand on your field and a trash specifically with the lead on it. So you don't also don't wanna, you know, all the paper towels flowing around uh, and clean, available clean bathrooms for your visitors. Why this is important? You no, know, it doesn't need to be very complex. You don't need to have uh, a fairly, uh, you know, like a specific place with, you know, with pipe and, and, and everything. You need, it can, it can be as simple as this picture, but, you know, make sure that you have this available for your visitors so they understand the importance uh, of hand washing and then you have instructions from them on how to do it. Again, you cannot uh, enforce that because they're visitors, they're co your customers, but you must have this available for them with instructions that they must wash their hands before entering the fields. And also employing trainees, as, as I mentioned before, it is, it, it's very important. They need to know uh, all about food safety policies and practices on the farm so they can guide uh, the visitors um, for training for handling cash and payment forms. So those ones that are handling cash and payment forms, they should not be assisting folks in the field uh, or handling fresh produce. They should be allocated to handling cash and payment forms. If they need to be allocated to the field, they need to know that they need to wash their hands uh, before going to the field. Uh, that they are trained where visitors can't go and cannot go. Normally you would put signage on your field or on your, you're gonna uh, fencing around or, you know, tape it. Uh, but, you know, in case people wander around or they, they walking in places they cannot be, uh, your employees are trained that they know that visitors cannot go in that area. Uh, so they they know how 
you know, to tell them this is not uh, supposed to, you do not, you're not supposed to go to the area. Uh, this is their area that you're going to be picking up. And then, so they're trained to know all of that and also handling and preparing the containers uh, that they are going to be using. Uh, so make sure that they understand that they need to be cleaned, that they cannot be placed on the floor or places in the areas that might, you know, get contaminated or get dirty. Uh, and talking about containers, that can be one-time use containers that you can see, uh, like the 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 bean the the plastic containers, or it can be reusable containers, plastic or paper. Uh, sometimes customers like to bring their own. Uh, I would say it is okay as long as they understand that they are not bringing contamination to your field. So assessing whether this container is appropriate for foods, uh, for you know, putting food on it, or you're not uh, bringing any risks to your fields, that should be fine. But you know, you need to consider that part. But if you're using one-time use or reusable containers, that both options, if you're using reusable containers, you make sure that they are cleaned and sanitized uh, after use. So that is pretty important. So while you have visitors on your farm, uh, you must educate them on food safety policies. So you have all your policies, uh, you have all the signage and everything in place. Now you have to make sure that they understand the basic practices. They don't need to read a, a whole documentation. You don't need to give them a training, but you know, you have some reading uh, documentation that is available or some signage or so you can have your website that they can come and and then and, and then read about your your uh your place uh always always encourage hand washing so that's why it's important to have a hand washing station there again you cannot um uh, force them to wash their hands but you know you always encourage and tell them why it is important to wash their hands uh, before and uh, after picking um uh, fresh produce not eating in the field. I know this is very tempting, especially for kids, but, you know, tell them that it is not appropriate to eat in the field. You know, we can, uh, people, you never know when people are sick or they're eating and dropping on the floor or, you know, dropping in on, on top of your, or your crops. So that could be a risk. Uh, so make sure that, you know, if they want to eat something, they can eat on the side and they can pick it up. And then, you know, this is a good way to educate, especially kids. And do not harvest dropped or contaminated produce. So make sure that you know uh, they understand that if, if you're they're picking up produce that is on the floor, it's hard to say when you're picking strawberries because they grow next to the plastic or next to the ground. But if they uh, fall off the 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 plant, or if you're picking blueberries, or you know bush uh, bush or tree uh, fruit, fruit trees they're not picking the ones that are on the ground they're picking the ones that are hanging on the uh, on the plants uh, or they can see if there is a uh, poop around or any you know, like a bird drops or anything they are not supposed to uh, pick or eat those fruits uh, also for animals, I mentioned, you make sure that you have signages and your visitors understand that pets are not allowed on the field in the farm. They can stay in the parking lot or in the car or in the areas that are not close to the produce fields. Um, but people have service animals, you know, and then uh, they can, you know, they can bring their animals with them, but they must be kept under control. Um, if and there's few questions that you are only allowed to do for uh, service animals so first you can ask them if that is a service animal required for a disability or uh, and also what at work uh, or at what work or test has the animal been trained to do those are the two only questions that you can make to the person. You not you cannot make any other questions about what kind of disability, what kind of uh, you know specific things that the, the the dog does. Or that's the only two questions. Uh, 
you know, and then if they say yes, and they're, they're trained animals for disability, um, you have to allow them to have their animal with them. But again, the animal must be under control. If the animal is running around or, you know, if they, that you see the animal uh, pooping in the field or peeing in the field, you can call the attention and say, yeah, this is not appropriate because this is a trained animal should not be doing that. So if you want to know a little bit more, more about service animals on UP car uh, operations, there is, a, there is a publication at UGA uh, Extension uh, uh, only about talking about service animal on UP car farms. So this is the, uh, the publication. You can find it easily on their website. Uh, so when you have visitors on your farm, uh, let them know where they can and they cannot go. So a good way is to have signings and directions to the field where they can go. So mostly uh, you have those fields that tape it so they know where they can go and signings that this way or do not pick this area, you know. So you make sure that you have signage and it's well signed so they know where they can go. Uh, rope it off the limit of the area. So that's what mostly people do. Uh, and protect farm equipment and vehicles from visitors. So you have you have trucks, you have your some some carts around and you have some uh, equipment harvesting and then uh, and then other equipment that they would be dangerous, especially to kids. Like, like they like to climb and they, you know, they're very sneaky. Uh, so make sure that you keep those you protect your consumers or your visitors from going to these areas that you have equipment and vehicles. Um, after you have your visitors on your farm, you know, you have to make sure that your, your area is organized and it's clean and it's safe for the next ones to come, whether it's next day or whether it's in within a week. So you have to clean and sanitize equipment that have been used during that time Clean the bathrooms, um, replenish with any supplies and containers that you have on the bathroom or in the hand washing station, and review any policy and inform. So maybe you saw you have your food safety policies in place, but maybe you saw something that was not thought before ahead, and, and you can change it. You can review your policy, you can change things and for the next time to avoid incidents. Uh, also evaluate the field for new concerns. So remove any trash or debris that are left in the field. You know, it's hard to control, especially when you have a, a lot of people coming in and a high traffic of people during the day. But also if you, if you saw people bringing in uh, service animals to their area, you know, give a walkthrough to your field and make sure that there's no uh, animal dropping or anything that, you know, the animal could brought in and contaminated the field, remove any dropped and damaged fruit. You know, that is very common when you go, especially, you know, strawberries. It's hard, again, it's hard to, to monitor everybody and the people eat and then they harvest one, um, they don't want that, that one and they drop it on the floor. So, it's it's common to have uh, drop it or damaged fruit all over your field. So make sure you remove that also because it could be an attractive to to other animals during the night. You know they could be attracted attractive to um, pests and animals coming to your field and then and then becoming a risk as well and also damaging your your crop so make sure you clean everything after they leave and then make sure that your fields are 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 they're supposed to come for the next visits records and documentation keep your logs and food safety documentations in place and always review your reading policies and signs maybe you're not very clear with the signage so people are a little bit confused so you can redo them for next time when they come and they say, well, I don't think it was very clear. I don't think it was big enough. Uh, so I'm going to redo it. So reviewing your reading policies and signs. Uh, recording food safety incidents, you know, especially when you have visitors in your farm, you're not, you, they're not like trained staff. They, they're not trained at all, especially kids. So you have to record any incident that you saw and what was the corrective action? What did you do 
to you know to resolve that incident and and, and it's not a problem it's it's is ideal to record any incident especially uh pointing out and and, and what was the um corrective measure that you did at the time. Maybe you have to review or reading policies again based on the incident that happened. Um, review records of sales. So this is a good way to keep track on, you know, on what you've been, how much you've been making. And especially if you're trying to go from small uh, to a small operation to uh, a larger operation. Uh, always keep records of your field, lots, crops, state, and everything because you know people might come to your farm and say i got i ate your strawberries and i got sick so i said well i do i grow strawberries following safety practices here's my documentation so it's your liability uh, so make sure you keep all of that and on your records on your uh, keep all your documentation up to date so that's pretty much it for pickup operations. So that's pretty much for this type of unique operation. But, you know, on top of that, you should be doing all of the food safety practices that are uh, in place for growing and harvesting fresh produce. So if you want to learn more about all these food safety practices, you can get in contact with us with the food safety team and then the commercial horde team. We provide a, a, a ton of uh, education and training for you. So if you're interested, you wanna learn more about food safety training and practices, just get in touch with us.